Meanwhile, 22 suspects in the multi-billion National Youth Service scandal will spend the next seven days in police custody as they await to know whether they will be released on bail or not. This followed last night's order by Chief Magistrate Douglas Ogoti, who rejected the bail application by suspects' lawyers. Suspended uh, Public Service Principal Secretary Lilian Omolo, who was among the remanded suspects, has been admitted to hospital after she fell ill. Hussein Mohammed has been following the court's proceedings for us. For about 12 hours, all cameras were glued to Kenya's Milimani High Court. From the prosecution to the defense, everyone contested their views. All eyes were to the accused and the chief magistrate, Douglas Ogoti. Public Service PS Lilian Omolo, who was among the suspects, pleaded not guilty to conspiring to commit corruption at the youth agency. All these were captured as the case kicked off in proceedings that went beyond midnight. Chief Magistrate Douglas Ugoti, however, did not adjourn the case. He said that he needed at least three days to make a reasonable ruling. Defense lawyers pleaded for their clients to spend time in their police cells and not remand prison. The women were remanded at the Langata Women's Prison, while the men at the industrial area remand prison. Ten files. Ten files which means 10 different sets of bonds. Uh, it's punitive, it is going to be hard, and this has been done maliciously by the state because they wanted maybe the accused persons to remain in custody, just to embarrass them further, because these charges could have been consolidated in one way or the other. Hours later, after spending the second night in remand, P.S. Lyndon Bogo fell ill and could not walk. She was rushed to Kenyatta National Hospital and later the Nairobi Hospital. DPP Nurdin Haji has prepared 10 separate files to prove that the 54 accused persons committed economic crimes. Also requested the, the, the Chief Justice on this matter, especially the NYS, that we deal with it expeditiously. Uh, hopefully even within the next three or four months. That is going to be a lengthy case and being 10 different files, that means 10 different courts and that means that 10 different days for every particular case. And therefore you never know how long a case will take in which particular court. Chief Magistrate Douglas Ogoti will rule on bail applications by the suspects on Tuesday next week with pre-trials set to commence the following day. Usain Mohamed, KTN News, Nairobi. Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture, Mwangi Kirinjuri, says the ball is now in the court of the Directorate of Criminal Investigations and the Chief Executive Officer of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to conduct investigations on unscrupulous traders who were paid some 3.2 billion shillings at the expense of genuine maize farmers. Kimjuri said there is a possibility that some influential politicians colluded with NCPP depot managers to fast track payments for the maize cartels. Kimjuri tabled a list of 81 traders who delivered maize in the NCPP depots in Eldridge, Kitale, Bungoma, Nakuru, and Moise Bridge, the tune of 3.2 billion shillings. Patrick Amimo reports from Parliament. Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture and Irrigation, Mwangi Kuinjuri, honored the invite by the National Assembly's Departmental Committee on Agriculture to help unravel the maize scandal at the National Cereals and Produce Board. I've been promising Kenyans that we are going to spill the beans, we are going to name names. According to the ministry, the NCPB started receiving maize on 16th October 2017 and suspended maize intake on 18th April 2018 after procuring a total of 6.5 million 50 kilogram bags from... 12,287 farmers with a total value of 11.6 billion shillings. Between 16th October 2017 to 12th January 2018, over 3.5 million 50 kilogram bags of maize valued at 6.3 billion shillings was delivered. Between 13th January 2018 and 28th March 2018, over 2.9 million 50 kilogram bags valued at 5.2 billion shillings was delivered. So far, 11,326 farmers have been paid 8 billion shillings for the maize deliveries. 961 extra farmers are yet to be paid a total of 3.5 billion shillings. In 2017-2018 financial year, the government had projected to buy 2 million bags of maize and made budgetary provisions for the same, amounting to 7 billion shillings. However, the government overshot the initial budget by 4.6 billion shillings and ended up spending 11.6 billion shillings for the purchase of maize. It is suspected NCPB depot managers colluded with traders to shortchange genuine maize farmers. One trader... Chef Churchill in the Erodolet depot had made 786 deliveries that was totaling up to 219,236 bags of maize in 102 days. That would translate to 7.73 per day 
from Monday to Sunday. How can a farmer or a trader be able to make 786 trips, deliveries, 786 deliveries, without raising alarm, even to the depot manager? These traders, there is no way they could have had that influence of supplying maize and be paid one or three days. Somebody was behind them. And this truth will come out. For me, I can tell you, it is not our office. It will come out. There has been hue and cry from farmers whose maize remain unsold. Kunjuri tabled a list of 18 maize traders who supplied maize in the depots of Eldoret, Kisumu and Nakuru. Kunjuri tabled an additional list of three traders who supplied maize in the NCPB depots of Bungoma, Kitale and Moisbridge who had failed the vetting. The traders supplied over 1 million 50 kilogram bags valued at 1.6 billion shillings and have already been paid 1 billion shillings. The ministry has also suspended three regional managers and five silo managers and the chief executive officer of NCPB. 59 other officials from NCPB are under preliminary investigations. We are talking of a farmer who only harvested maize worth 50,000 and not paid today. Well, a trader pocketed 338 million. The question is, who is defending that farmer who is still suffering? because we have people defending the traders. Were the millers using cereal stores to store their maize and come back for them later, which also could have affected this thing that they were still maize at the cereals. You so you need to come out very clearly on that. Yeah. These people and some of these big fish in quotes are in Eldoret, let's say Eldoret Depot. Why can't the CS just, just find out what is happening in Eldoret Depot? Kunjuri promised to table a special audit report of the names of farmers and traders who supplied 6.5 million bags of maize to NCPB stores Quantities and payments made to each in 21 days. Patrick Amimo, KTN News. At the same time, uh, the 22 suspects in the multi-billion shillings, even as those 20 suspects face multiple charges in relation to the suspected 9 billion shilling scandal at the National Youth Service, the country is still reeling from the shock of acquittal of 23 out of the 24 suspects, prime suspects of the infamous 791 million shillings NY scandal of 2015. But just what went wrong with the prosecution of the cases and should the same fate and could the same fate befall the current NYS cases? What do you interrogates? Call it same walk of shame, only different cast this time, or is it? 20 suspects before Chief Magistrate Douglas Agotti over the alleged loss of 467 million shillings. Suspected to be part of the now infamous 9 billion loot at the National Youth Service. Same spot where trial magistrate Kennedy Bidali released 23 of 24 persons identified as prime suspects to the inaugural NYS 791 million scandal. Only some two months and 20 days ago. We'll give the prosecution. So will this trial yield any different result? I know Kenyans are tired. I've also been tired, tired of the same old, same old uh, um, unusual business. Uh, uh, I think let's leave it to time. Director of Public Prosecution Nurdin Haji has since appealed the March 9th verdict, accusing trial magistrate Bidali of not interrogating in totality prosecution evidence presented on the 791 million scandal. In his verdict that saw former Principal Secretary Peter Mangiti, former NYS Deputy Director General Aden Harake, businessman Ben Gethy, hairdresser Josephine Kafura, and 19 others walk free. <laughs> In the same verdict, Bidali ruled that former Secretary to the NYS Tender Opening Committee, Celasio Karanja, had a case to answer. But if indeed documentary paper trail and audit reports show public funds have been lost or no procurement took place, just what makes it so hard for convictions to be made on mega corruption cases at the NYS? The experience of the people that they have is a question that we have to look at. Uh, most of these are very young advocates who you know, uh, have two, three years uh, post-admission experience. Uh, when they come to handle these particular matters, they lack that level of experience that will be very necessary. We are understaffed here. Uh, we have lost a lot of um, officers. 
to better paying institutions like the judiciary, um, uh, like uh, the ESCC. As much as we are mourning that we've lost them, we're also happy because they're, they're doing a great job. In the latest NYS cases, Haji will be heavily relying on financial irregularities, flooded off by the IFMI system. The same financial infrastructure which for one of the 791 million scandal. So could the graft cartels have outsmarted the IFMI's checks, outfoxed detectives and outwitted the prosecutors? That IFMI system, in my view, is a very robust system. And uh, as long as you use it and you enter information into it, there are auditors. People can actually follow uh, and, and get to know whether something was ordered before and uh, whether it was actually delivered. Or you can separate the things which were delivered and yet they were not ordered for. We want the public to come forward and stand for their country. Don't watch crimes being committed and you leave and you go lamenting. Come forward and stand for your country. Do the where, where protection will be required, the, the witnesses will be given protection. Now with the field in the NYS back before the judicial corridors, the competence and goodwill of the Kenyan criminal justice system is yet again under test as the prosecution of the graft cases continues. Muremi Mwangi, Kitia News, in Nairobi. And to some politics now, and President Uhuru Kenyatta has taken a swipe at his deputy president, William Ruto, as, at his deputy, William Ruto, after he called uh, early campaigns in his quest to become the president in 2022. The president, who spoke after an event in Islands today, said his deputy was busy campaigning all over the country instead of working for the people. The president had attended an event to issue 50,000 title deeds to Nairobi residents. Take a look. Hii kijana anaitwa Ruto unajua kila weekend anatanga tanga 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 kila pahali atakuwa anapitia hizi machorochoro akiona kuna kitu inaenda kona kona mumwambie si ni namna hiyo si ni namna hiyo tuhakikishe kazi ya wananchi imefanyi tumekubaliana ni wangapi wamesema tuwache siaza twende kazi twende kazi you're watching KTN Prime. Thank you for staying with us. Let's take a quick commercial break. We are back shortly. Don't go too far. Tunakuletea Pampers Baby Dry mpya ndio diaper pekee iliyo na njia tatu za kusambaza unyevunyevu kwa usawa hivyo basi haisaki kama diaper za kawaida sasa pata diaper moja ya Pampers Original kwa 25 bob 2 in the World Cup. Who will get through the group stage and on the way to the finals? How do you see Brazil, Germany and France doing? Pick your winners right now and win the whopping 100 million shillings bet boss jackpot. There's no easier way to turn 100 shillings into 100 million shillings. Simply text WCFAV to 29442 now to pick the boss's current World Cup favorite. Change your mind, change your bet. If you play now, the boss will give you one free chance to change your bet before the World Cup starts. Over 18s only. Gaming can be addictive. Play responsibly. This message has been approved by the BCLB. Leo, tutaonyesha njia ya kuhifadhi pesa katika nyakati hizi ngumu. Kwa nini sabuni hii inasafisha na ni bei rahisi? Lakini Ariel hungarisha zaidi kutumia sabuni kidogo zaidi. Haiwezekani. Nyasi, chai na kinywaji cha chokoleti itahitaji moja vipimo viwili na kipimo kimoja tu cha Ariel. Mwasho bora sabuni kidogo zaidi. Na hiyo ni ya kibakweli. Moja tu imetosha. The Smart Harvest and Technology Pullout is now bigger, brighter and better with Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology as the official knowledge partner. 
The Smart Harvest and Technology Pullout has taken farming to the next level with Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology experts' guidance on soil, food science, animal health, and water technology. Advice on value addition that offer guidance on how farmers can make more on fruits and vegetables. The pullout highlights the innovations in technology and guarantee maximum yields for farmers. The counties feature successful farmers' stories that share best practice methods. All this and so much more in your copy of the Smart Harvest and Technology Pullout, only available in your copy of the Saturday Standard. Complete cleaning at one go. Wow. Happy Mini, only 100 shillings. The real value champion. Just like you. Welcome back to KTN Prime. Let's now bring you some breaking news tonight that indicates that the KPA Managing Director, Catherine Mturi Wairi, has been shown the door in a dramatic twist of events. After about three years on the job and amid a crisis of epic proportions at the port of Mombasa, the crisis has seen ships leave the Kenyan port without goods destined for Europe and cargo pile up there and at the, uh, at the internal container depot here in Nairobi. An exclusive by, a report by our sister publication, The Standard, established the 32,000 imports and export containers have been lying at the port and the ICD in Nairobi since Thursday last week, rattling the Jubilee administration and other East African countries that use the port. We understand that she has been shown the door. We are still trying to piece together the information that has happened in the last few minutes. Let's listen in can only be explained by a, by a lack of effective leadership at the top, a non-responsive work culture, consistent failure to implement board resolutions, and either absence of explicit performance targets or failure to implement them. Given that the managing director is responsible for all these aspects of leadership and guidance on expected delivery of service, the board has resolved to send her on a compulsory leave with immediate effect. The board has, in consultation with the cabinet secretary, appointed Dr. Architect Daniel Manduku, DBA, Corporate Arch Architect, 
to perform the duties of the managing director on an acting capacity for two months. Right, breaking news there from the port of Mombasa, uh, from uh, Daniel Manduku, formerly of the National Construction Authority, given uh, is the acting uh, MD of the Kenya Ports Authority. De de developing story there that we are keeping an eye on. Our team in Mombasa is currently there trying to piece together the information. This coming just a few days after four cabinet secretaries uh, took over operations at the port of Mombasa. We are keeping an eye on this for you. Still on gra matters graphs. And former transport CS Michael Kamau was back in court Wednesday challenging corruption offences levelled against him. Kamau wants abuse of office charges being preferred against him quashed on the grounds that the same charges were previously terminated by the Court of Appeal. Julie Owino with that story. The former CS appeared before the anti-corruption court Wednesday morning over abuse of office allegations that have been preferred against him regarding the 33 million shillings Kamukuyo Kaptama Kapsoko in Syria Road tender. Kamau, who was represented in the case by his lawyer Nelson Harvey. Let me to refer you to Article 27 of the Constitution. Appeared before Milimani Chief Magistrate Douglas Agati and sought to challenge the charges. Kamau argues that he will not be accorded a fair trial if he is prosecuted twice for an offence allegedly committed 10 years ago. Article 157, sub-article 11 of the Constitution is expressed on how the DPP should exercise his powers. And it closes as follows. The director of public prosecution shall have regard to the public interest the interest of the administration of justice and the need to prevent and avoid abuse of the legal process. Two of Kamau's co-accused have already been charged with similar offences. But even as he appeared at Milimani Court to heed to summons issued to him <laughs> in Nyeri town, a group of his supporters staged demos in support of the former CS, claiming that he was targeted unfairly in the war against graft. The protesters displayed placards with message of solidarity with Kamau. Sasa kama koti imesema, Kamau hana makosa. Sasa hakuna kitu igine ya kukaa kila siku na mchukua siju na mpereka wapi. Sisi watu wanyeri, iyo kitu tumechoka nae. But a section of the residents also opposed the claims by Kamau backers, claiming they were hired by corrupt individuals who were seeking to prevent justice. We si sirikali fanya kasi, alafu na sisi kwa nainchi. Saile sirikali nafanya kasi, tuchukue makaratasi, atitulide muisi. Hakuna iyo tumekata. Tumekata. Kila mtu abebe mtalaba yake. Julie Owino, KTN News. Elsewhere, Kapsegut residents in the county of Elgeo, Marakwet, are living in fear after a fault line developed in parts of Kalwal and Turesha areas. The fault line continues to cut off some feeder roads and prompting families to leave their homes. The Geological Society of Kenya says it is carrying out studies in the areas affected. Elvis Kosge with the details. <laughs> Kapsegut area, Elgeo, Marakwet County. Nicholas Kipruto welcomes us to his only earthly position that has now developed fault lines. For him, the fault lines are dark clouds hanging over his head. Residents here are living in fear as the tectonic plates have already shifted at Kalwal area, rendering the route that connects Kalwal to Turesia impassable. <laughs> The longer fault zone at Kalwal, which is about five feet wide, could potentially lead to massive destruction. Several families have now been forced to flee from their homes due to the risks posed by the fault lines. The road that connects to Resha Kalwal has been rendered impossible following the heavy rains. Residents are now living in fear following the heavy rains pounding in the country. Like today we've lost this road that crosses from 
to Russia, all the way to Kalwal, as it connects to the other side of, of the world. And it is, it is normal. You try to divert the road, where the children are crossing now to go to school, again, there is a fault line along that, that place. It is, it is disaster in it. According to the CC for Water, Environment and Natural Resources, Abraham Barsocio, these are not the only fault lines that are formed in the area as a result of recent heavy rains. We need geologists to come to this place. Na tunataka watu wa national disaster management. Na tutahakikisha kuwa sisi kama serikali ya ukatusi, tumehakikisha kuwa wale wanadau wote ambao tunaweza shirikiana pamoja. The weatherman has already warned that the rains will continue pounding parts of Rift Valley Islands in the coming week. Elvis Kosgei, KT News, El Geomarakwet County. Now, as you all know, the Queen of Afro Pop, Nigerian songbird Yemi Alade, is in town, and our sister radio station, Radio Maisha, is hosting the Choma Nangoma Festival tomorrow at the Kenyatta International Convention Center, where Yemi Alade will be performing. Tandiwe Yego is at the venue to bring us up to speed. Uh, Tandiwe, good evening. Is it all systems go for arguably the biggest event this year? Good evening, Ben. It definitely is. Right now, things are a bit quiet, of course. It is the quiet before the storm, I think you could say. And we're gearing up for a very, very exciting evening. As you can see behind me, the setup is fully, fully in check. Everybody is so excited about this event. And of course, today I had a very, very interesting conversation with the star of the show, the international act, Madame Yemi Alade, aka the Queen of Africa. And she gave us some insight into how exciting the show is going to be and a bit of what to expect and Ben with me right now I have Chimano from Saudi Soul who's also going to be making an appearance and he's going to tell us a bit of what to expect from Saudi Soul. Chimano how are you this evening? Hi how are you? I'm, I'm good. good. I'm good. Are you good? I'm fantastic oh, so. Chimano. Oh. So please tell us what can we expect from this event from Saudi Soul? Um, you'll just expect our, our, our heart and soul and um, we've been rehearsing we just had a whole day of rehearsals today um, yeah, and so now sound check is, we're just about to go on sound check. So heart and soul, music from the heart that goes to the heart will just give a good live performance. All right, so. Chimano, thank you so much. So make sure you come down to the KICC. You've heard it here from Chimano. It's going to be lit. It's going to be amazing. So make sure you make your way down here. Don't miss it for anything. Back to you, Ben. Thank you, Tandiwe. Tandiwe, you're there at the KICC where the Choma Nangoma Festival is going to be going down tomorrow. Uh, nights, I have my tickets ready, so be sure to catch yours, uh, to get yours as well. All right, you're watching KTN Prime. Let's take another quick commercial break. When we come back, uh, Peter Wakaba will be bringing you the latest from the world of business. Stay with us. News. Deucing, always cotton soft. Its unique top sheet is as soft as cotton and gentle to your skin while offering you soft and comfortable protection as you go about your day. Always cotton soft. Now available starting from 50 shillings only. 